Hi, the Virians. They say that those who don't know their history are condemned to repeat it. And it is also said that play is the best way to learn something. Uh, so, how, what could be better than to play an historical event and maybe changing it? Okay, you can do it thanks to España 1936. This is a game designed by Antonio Catalan with a renovated art by Juan Guardiet. This is an introduction work game for two players that lasts between two and three hours. In Spain 1936, you will lead one of the two sides of the Spanish uh, Civil War, okay, the Republicans or the Nationalists, and basically you will move your troops, you will assign their generals, fight battles, to use tanks and airplanes to support your attacks, everything and, and play even cards uh, to change the course of the war, but everything to uh, control the maximum amount of territories and win the war. So let's take a closer look to what's inside the box and then we will show you how to play España 1936. The first thing you will find in the box is the rule book. Uh, Obviously, you have a thick rule books because uh, the game involves a lot of things and everything is explained here. Also, it includes some variants uh, and the Armada expansion. So, because everything is here, you have a, a thick rule book, but you will see that the game is not as complicated as it seems. You have the main board representing the map of Spain with the different territories. Each territory is divided in two, uh, in red for the Republicans and in blue for the uh, Nationalist troops. And you have two kinds of territories, the white ones and the black ones. The white ones are the regular ones, the black ones are the objective territories, those are the ones that will give you the, the points for the victory, okay? Um, also, some of those territories, they have a, an anchor here, that's a harbor that may be affected by some event cards. You have a special territory down here, which is Marruecos, uh, in the north of Africa, that uh, territory uh, will provide troops for the nationalist uh, player uh, through Cadiz or Sevilla. From here, they will go into the peninsula right here. In this part, you have the turn track, okay, with its marker, with the years of the different uh, turns, uh, the number of cards that you will draw at the beginning of each turn, and some uh, replacement phases between some of the of the turns. And finally, in this side, you have the uh, objective territory strike, okay, for the Republican, for the Nationalists, and the territories that are contested here with the three markers. Talking about boards, you have a combat zone board, okay, that one is used to fight the battles. If you have too many counters in a space, you can place them here and you will have a more clean combat, so it's very helpful. And finally, you have two boards for the players, okay, with a sp a spice, a sp space sorry, for the replacement points that you will have, space for generals and airplanes before you deploy them into the main board, and the game sequence here, okay, the blue lines uh, belong to the Armada expansion. Uh, and then you have a lot of counters, as you can see, okay? Uh, usually, well, no, usually no, but the, the red ones belong to the Republican side, the blue ones and the green ones to the Nationalists, and you have military units, like those here, with a value of one or two, the smaller ones, on one side, and the bigger ones with a value of three or five. The big number uh, belongs to the combat value of the unit, that's the number of uh, dice that you will roll in combat, and also you make reference to the, um, to the grade of the, of the unit. So every time a unit gets hit, it's then grade from 5 to 3, from 3 to 2, etc. And if it must be upgraded, then you go for the, from the 1 to the 2, etc. etc. Also, some of, well, all of those uh, counters, they have a flag or a symbol here, okay? It belongs to the faction of the unit inside their army, okay? So you have the regular Republicans, you have Phalanges, etc., etc. That's important in case you have to upgrade or downgrade a unit. Uh, you, you have to try to respect the, the flag or the symbol, but we will talk uh, about this uh, in detail later. You have also airplane 
um, <coughs> airplane counters, also with a combat value, and a modificator, okay, that the modificator in the planes is just for the air uh, fights, okay, the modifiers in the um, combat units, it's used to modify the results of the dice, and same thing with tanks, okay, you have just a, a modifier that will uh, change the value of the dice you rolled. Okay, tanks will be used just as support. Okay, that's why they don't have a, a combat value. Here. You have also counters for the different uh, generals, five generals for each side. Okay, with the name of the general, uh, a flag or a symbol, and some of them they have a modifier like those here. And finally, you have those counters here that uh, are used to show who controls a territory. Okay, you have the Republican side on one side and the uh, uh, nationalist uh, flag in the other. Also, each player has five dice, blue for the nationalists, red for the republicans, and there's one counter for the combat zone. Uh, as we said before, if you use uh, the combat zone board to place all the units in a territory to fight the battle there, you place this one in the territories to show that this, this is the territory that is uh, uh, being uh, in combat. And basically those are the counters that you will find in the regular game. Uh, those here, the green ones, uh, are for the African troops, but they belong to the nationalist side. And also each player has uh, two decks of cards, okay? The red ones for the Republican again, and the blue ones for the nationalist. The cards are divided by the years. You have the deck for the 36-37, and the one for the 38 and 39. All the cards are pretty much the same thing, okay? Those are used can be used in the events phase or in combat as support. And you have the name and explanation of the event. You have here um, the date. Okay, Some of them are historical suppositions. Those are not historical facts, but things that may happen, but didn't. Okay, And then you have here the explanation of what uh, was the effect of the card if it's used during the events phase. And down here, uh, what's uh, the, the effect of the card if it's used in the battle phase, okay? Also, the cards has a number here, just to put them in order. And some of those cards, they have a, um, a letter down here. It could be an E. Those are uh, cards for a variant uh, that uh, you may use or not. And some, they have an A. They belong to the Armada expansion. So if you're not playing with the Armada or with the, this variant, you won't use those cards. And as we said uh, before, there's the expansion for the Armada, and that's the, those are the, the, the elements that you will find. You have tiles for the naval bases, tiles for the oceans, that, uh, depending on who controls the sea, uh, it will affect in the game differently. And you have some naval units, like ships or uh, submarines, some uh, extra harbors that you may add, and uh, an ion-packed uh, Style. Okay, that's the, and as we said, some cards for the Armada, but just to keep it in mind. Okay, so those are all the elements that you will find inside the box. So it's time to put them all together and, uh, and make the setup, and then we will show you how to play the game. Okay. First of all, place the board at the center of the playing area. Place the turn track at the beginning, well, the marker at the beginning of the track, and all the three uh, markers for the territory, objective territories uh, tracks in the number four. Okay, sorry. Now players take all their elements, the, uh, the player board, place it in front of you. Take all your counters and the dice, of course, and the cards and uh, place the counters as shown in the rulebook, okay, for the initial deployment, okay? We, we're not going to explain all the different territories and all the units that you must place here because it will be a long and tedious video. So just or stop the frame here to look at the, the initial deployment or check it in the rulebook and place all the counters as shown there. Place the combat zone board next to the, to the main board and now separate the two decks, okay, your two decks, and shuffle them separately. Remove the cards with an E or with, or with an A, if you're not playing with the variant 
or with the Armada expansion, shuffle the 3637 and the 3839, leave the 3839 to one side, it will be used later in the game, but you will start with this one, with the 3637. And uh, well, keep, keep uh, close to you the remaining counters that won't be used at the beginning, and with this, you're ready to start playing uh, España 1936. A game of España 1936 is played in 10 turns, uh, or a little bit less if some player achieves an automatic victory, that we'll talk it, uh, about later. But it's not, it's 10 turns, and in those turns you must follow a series of um, of steps or, or phases, okay? The first phase is to draw cards, the second one is the movement of troops, the third is the assignment of generals, the fourth is to fight battles, the sixth is to, well, to play the events, the, the events phase, and finally you have the maintenance phase. Once you have accomplished all those phases, just move the turn track to the next space. If it's a new turn, just play a new turn, but and if it's a replacement phase, just play the replacement phase that we will explain later. So now that we know all the different phases of a turn, let's take a closer look to all of them. As we said, the first one is to draw cards. At the beginning of your turn, you will draw as many cards as shown in the turn you're playing. So usually you will draw three cards, but at the beginning you will draw six, and also at the beginning of the sixth turn. That's because at, uh, before starting the sixth turn, you must uh, discard your entire hand and remove the 3637 uh, deck and take the 3839 and from now on until the end of the game you will play with this one okay but we are at the beginning and just draw the number of cards shown here in our case the six at the beginning and once both players have drawn their cards it's time to move to the next phase the second phase is the movement phase in this phase uh, starting by the nationalist player Players will move all their troops, well, all the troops that they want, that are in the main board. And once the nationalist player has moved all their troops, then the Republican player will do the same. Okay, uh, it's important to know that each unit uh, can move just once during uh, this phase. So we recommend once you have moved a unit to rotate it uh, like 45 degrees. Okay, that way you will know how many troops or uh, have moved and it will, be, it will be easier to remember this way. Also, it's important to know that different troops move differently and also they move differently depending where they start their movement. So let's see all those uh, specific things in detail, okay? First of all, for the military units that you have, if they start uh, their movement in a territory you control, they can move freely following, following the lines that connect the different territories, okay? And they must stop when they enter a territory with a counter from their opponent, okay? So if this one moves here, it must stop immediately. Here it can continue moving until here, for example, okay? And it's important also to know that if you are in a territory and you're leaving it uh, without any units, you must place one of your, uh, one of your uh, uh, control markers here, okay? to show that you are controlling this uh, territory and move it here and then just rotate it to show that it has already moved. Also, if, uh, if the unit enters in a space where your opponent only has a, a control marker, it must stop there, then you remove the objective, uh, about the, the territory, the control territory marker, and from now on, other units can pass through this space, okay? But the first time, you must stop. As we said before, every time you enter a space with your opponent's uh, counters, you must stop there. That was if the unit started in a territory you control, so uh, with uh, counters of your color. But if the movement starts in a territory, uh, in a contested territory, okay, uh, you cannot, uh, you must move to an adjacent territory as long as you have troops there, that's important, or counters there. So for example, let's imagine that we are here. Okay, we can move here, here, even here, because we have units, but if that one wasn't here and there wasn't a... But that one cannot go here because we have no troops here, okay? So, that's the thing. And 
you must leave at least one unit in the, in the territory of origin. So if we are moving from here to here, for example, we must leave at least one. You cannot abandon a territory, okay? So that's the thing. Uh, and then you move it and, as we say, just rotate it. So, as we said, the, um, the nationalists will do that with all the, their units and then the nationalists. Once you have moved your military units, okay, you cannot have more than four in the same space. But just, that's just for the uh, military units, okay? Tanks, airplanes and generals doesn't count for that. Well, you cannot have more than one general per space. Okay, but uh, if you have four units and a general, you can have two tanks, one airplane, etc., etc. So that's a movement for the military units. Tanks move a little bit different, okay? If you have a tank, tanks and airplanes, they will enter in the game thanks to event, face, uh, event cars, sorry. But if you have a tank, the tank can move uh, freely following the lines uh, in the territories you control, and they may, they can pass, they must, uh, pass through or stop in territories where you have units of your own, okay? So, because tanks will act as support units, they cannot go on themselves to the combat, okay? So if the tank is here, you can move it here, but it cannot enter this space because you have no units here, okay? So, tank can end here, okay? Another thing with tanks, okay, if they move from a contested territory, they can move uh, as many spaces as they want, just uh, respecting the, the movement rules that we already said, okay? They are not forced to move to uh, a connected uh, territory, just to an adjacent uh, territory. They can move more than one space here. That was because with tanks. Also with tanks and uh, military units, there's a, an important thing that we didn't say before. If they, all the adjacent territories are controlled by their opponent. Let's uh, imagine that that one, I don't know, that one here is controlled by the blue player and also with this one, okay? Let's imagine that this one here. That unit, uh, this unit is considered surrounded, okay? It has no place to retreat, so this unit cannot move, cannot attack, and cannot receive replacements or um, or anything unless the card says a different thing, okay? If you're using the card in the event phase for this. And with tanks, it happens the same. They cannot uh, act. Actually, tanks, if they don't have a unit, they, they die. If in combat, a tank remains alone, uh, the tank will be eliminated. Also, the airplanes, they move from your, uh, your personal board, okay? They start here and they can move anywhere on the board as long as you have units there, okay? So from here, you can send here, 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 wherever you want. And at the end of the battle and during the maintenance phase, uh, the airplanes will come back to your board, okay? Uh, there's a, a small exception with the airplanes uh, and it's just for the first time because uh, each side has one plane for the initial deployment here. Just for the first time, those uh, airplanes might, must remain in the territory where they are, or they can move as a regular unit. So, as we said, if this is in a contested area, it can move to an adjacent space. And because this one is here, is here in a controlled territory, it can move as many spaces as it wants until it enters another territory. So from here, it can stop here, okay? But that's just for the first time. And the last uh, spatial or different movement that you will find is, for, is in Marruecos, okay? with these uh, troops right here. Those troops won't be involved in the game until they enter the peninsula. So at the beginning of the event phase, the nationalist player can move up to three units. It doesn't matter if they are regular units or, uh, or generals. Uh, so this player can move uh, up to three units to uh, Cadiz, two to Cadiz and one to Sevilla at the beginning of the event phase. Uh, as long as the nationalist player controls or has uh, counters in those territories, okay? If your opponent controls one of the territories, you cannot send uh, the troops there. And as we said, uh, you can send the troops that you want. You can send three uh, military units or two um, generals and one unit. Just know that you cannot have more than one general per space in the same territory, okay? 
And that's the movement phase, uh, actually, okay? Once the nationalists have moved all their troops, then the Republican will do the same. And once both players have moved their troops, it's time to move to the next phase, that is the assignment of generals. In the assignment of generals phase, uh, players will alternate once each time uh, to um, assign generals to the territories where they have units. So starting by the nationalist players, uh, we, um, the player will assign one general to a territory where uh, they have troops, and then the Republican will do the same until you have placed all your generals. That's an important phase because generals are the one that can start a battle in a territory. So if you have if you don't have a general, you cannot start a, a battle there. Mm, some generals may enter the game thanks to event cards, okay, and some because of movement from Marruecos, as you can see, those two here. And some are already in the main board. And actually, that's, there's a small exception for the first one, because some generals are already in the board, so you cannot assign those regular, in, like in, the, in a regular turn, okay? So just for the first time, those uh, generals must be assigned to the territory where they are, or they can move as tanks. Uh, just following the same rules as tanks, okay? So just following the lines, but uh, stopping the, their movement in territories where the player has units. And once you have assigned all the generals, then it's time to move to the battles phase. And this phase will start again with the nationalist player, and players will choose one of their generals, and declare if the general wants to attack or not. Okay, so you have to activate one general and then decide it. Okay, let's imagine that the nationalist player uh, chooses this one. Okay, this one doesn't attack. So just flip the general. It has already been used. Then it's the turn for the Republican and the Republican will choose one of their generals and decide if the general wants to attack or not. Okay, remember that we say in the first time that uh, generals can move just for the first time. Okay, so let's imagine that Rojo is here, for example, and then the Republican can decide, okay, I want to attack with this one. So if that happens, a battle uh, must start. So let's see uh, how battles work in detail. So the battles uh, are fought, uh, are fight with the, um, with the counters that you have in a single territory, okay, and just with those, um, those units. Okay, let's imagine that the thing was here, and the nationalist player with Mola declared an attack here. So as we say, you have the, uh, this board, to make it more simple, you have like too many units, so it's better to move it here, okay, and say that one here, the general comes here, and the Republican has those units here. Remember to place the combat marker here, to remember that, that this fight happens in Madrid, Okay, and the, um, the, the, the combat will follow those steps. Okay, first is the assignment of attackers and uh, of attacker and defender, then is the, <clears throat> the assignment or the commitment of supports and, uh, and play cards, then you have the dogfight, then you have the uh, re resolve the battle, so rolling the dice, apply the hits, and those phases you can, or those steps you can repeat it if there's more than one attack. We will show you how. And if not, the the battle ends, so the units can come, and a new battle can start if another general declares a, a battle. Um, the thing with battles is that they will be fought, uh, fight uh, one versus one. Okay, so one unit will attack one unit, and then is the attacker the one that will decide which is the attacker and which one is the defender, okay? Let's imagine that, well, as we said, the nationalist player declared the attack, so it attacks with this one to this unit here. Okay, let's add some airplanes to show you entirely how the battle will work with all the elements that can be involved here, okay? So as we said, the first step is to decide the attacker and the defender. Okay, the, the, a unit that attacks can only attack once in, in a single battle. Okay, so once that one has attacked, it will be already used. But the same defender can receive multiple attacks. So in the next attack, then uh, the player can choose another one and attack the same one, if it's still alive, and so on. But let's focus in the first one, okay? 
once the attacker has choose the, um, the attacker and the defender, it's time for the second step, that is the, uh, the commitment of support uh, troops. Okay? The units can be supported by airplanes, tanks, or even generals. Okay? So, uh, starting by the attacker, the uh, players will decide which uh, are the units that will support the attack. Let's imagine that we go with everything. Okay, the player, the tank, and also the general. And the Republican well, decides to do the same. Okay, tank, and, and that. Okay, and that's the thing. Once all the supports have been declared, it's time to decide if players want to play a card to support or not. As we said at the beginning, cards, they have a, a, a modifier, uh, that will affect the battles at the bottom of the card, okay? So, uh, starting by the attacker, players can decide, okay, we want to uh, play a card, so play, uh, place it face down, then the defender will do the same or not, and decide, okay, I will play the one, and then both cards are revealed at the same time, and the things that happen in the cards will be applied, okay? In, in our case, that's uh, remove one die from the attacker because it's used in the defend, and that's a support, uh, it's a plus two in two dice, okay? But that will be resolved later, okay? So once the units who will support the battle are decided and the cards uh, are used or not, that's up to each player, we'll move to the next phase. You must know also that the, the, the units or the tanks, airplanes and generals that are used to support uh, combat cannot be used again in the same combat, okay? So if in this battle, you use those things, once this battle is completed, those units will be already used, and if a new battle happens in the same combat, those cannot support again, okay? And as a defender, you can uh, use the, well, the, the attacker also, but the, the defender can use the general to support the defense, but that doesn't mean that the general is used for the general's phase, I mean, the general will be used to support, cannot support again, but once the battle has finished and you come back to the, to the main board, the general can be used to declare a new attack, even in the same territory, okay? So uh, as long as it wasn't you already used, okay, perfect. So that's the thing. Once you have all the supports, the units that will attack, the supports and the cards, then it's time to fight the, the dogfights, okay? If both player has airplanes supporting the attack, then a dogfight might happen. If just one player has uh, airplanes, or if the number of airplanes is different, let's imagine that this one was like here, okay, then the dogfights will be played uh, one versus one, okay? One airplane versus one airplane. Then the defender will choose uh, the planes that will pair, okay? Let's see if the Republican is a defender, okay, we want to fight this plane versus this plane, and if there are more than one, then uh, then more pairs will be uh, performed, and the attacker will decide in which order those fights will be solved. And that's a simple one, okay? You will r just roll the, the combat value of the plane and apply the modifier of the plane. The planes cannot be supported by any units, okay? It's just a, a single combat. So in our case, the red player will roll two dice, and the defender will roll two dice. The modifiers, the positive ones, and that's not just for dogfights, that's for everything, the positive ones can be used in the, in the result that the player wants. But the, the negative ones, like this one here, will be applied to the highest uh, result. Okay, but here we have no negative, so that's the thing. Player will roll two dice, and then we'll decide where to apply the, the results, okay? Uh, plus two, let's say that we apply to the five, becoming a seven, but, and this one, we have a plus one, we have a four, it becomes a five. Then, for the dogfights, with a six, the other plane is eliminated from the game, okay? So, in our case, the blue one will be eliminated. And with a five, the, the plane is incapacitated and cannot be used to support the ground attack, okay? So, it will come back to the, to the base, to the player board, okay? All the results, uh, make the planes available to support the ground attack. So if there was the numbers were like this, okay, both planes will be involved in the ground attack and they can apply the they can add the number of dice to the combat ground because planes they just add uh, dice to the 
ground combat, and tanks in general, they, apply, they add modifiers. But, well, as we said, that one was eliminated, that one come back here, and then those are the units that remain here. And once you have resolved all the dogfights, it's time to, to resolve the, the main combat, the ground combat, okay? So just check the number of dice that you must roll, okay? For the Republican, it will be one die here, plus one because of the plane, okay? Uh, the Republican, it will be one here, minus one because of the card, okay? So that will be, it will roll no dice, so it's uh, not a defeat because it will depend on the hits, but it won't roll any dice. But let's imagine that instead of uh, this one, there's a, a three here, okay? Let's imagine that, that this is the unit. So three dice, uh, it has no plane, so because there are no planes, no extra dice will be at Three minus one because of this one, is two dice, two for the blue, two for the red. And then you have all the modifiers. Remember, you have one negative here that will be applied to the higher roll, the blue one, and then you have a plus two that will be applied in the die that you want, and a plus one in the die that you prefer, okay? And here you have also a minus one, a plus two, a plus one, and another plus one. So once you have rolled both dice, it's time to... Um, to place everything. You have also a plus two because of the card for the nationalist, remember? So a minus one to the higher, it will be a two turns into a one, and then it has a plus two, a plus one, and a, pl a plus two to one die. So let's imagine, okay, the one turns into a three because of the card. Okay, let's go there. Then we have another plus two here, that's a five, and a plus one that can be applied here. And for the Republican, we have a minus one, the five turns into a four. And then you have a plus two, plus one, and another plus one. So uh, plus one is uh, two sixes. Okay. And then it's time, once you have um, rolled the dice and applied all the different uh, variables because of the modifiers, uh, it's time to apply the hits. A five and a six is a, is a hit. Okay, and for every hit, the unit that is in combat must be, let's say, downgraded one, one level. So a three turns into a, uh, a two. So let's take uh, this one, for example, just remember. Okay, and a two turns into a one. So we have applied one and another one. So this unit becomes a one. Now here we have a six, a one simply dies. So that will be the result for this battle, okay? When you are downgrading units, okay, you must try to respect, it must be replaced by the unit with the same um, shield or flag, okay? But if you don't have those units, okay, they are not available, uh, you can use regular units or uh, for the Republican side, you can use uh, Anarchist uh, militias or uh, <coughs> sorry or communist militias, and for the Republican they can use phalangist or carlist. Usually uh, the the thing is that you want uh, you will place units with um, with words modifiers. Okay, if you are losing uh, this one that has no modifier, and if you don't have those, you will place uh, the ones that don't have modi that have negative modifiers. You cannot place one that has a positive modifier. That's the thing, okay? And once the combat has solved, the used units will go here, and then if you won, that one is already used, and if the attacker wants and can, uh, it can declare another attack. Like, for example, here, it, the, the attacker can decide, okay, this one will attack this one. It's totally up to you. Um, but if the if the attacker decides to stop or uh, or has uh, run out of units that can attack, then the combat will end, and then uh, the units will co will go back to the starting. Well, with the units that survive and how they are right now, they will come back here. And uh, then the next player will decide if they want to activate a general to perform an attack or uh, or not. And that's that's the thing with the battle. Okay, once the battle has fought and it ends, 
you move to the next one and you will continue this way activating generals until all generals has been activated and you have to move to the events phase. In the events phase, players will alternate, okay? The players can play up to three cards and they will alternate playing one card at a time, starting by the nationalist, and uh, executing the, uh, the event shown in the card, okay? So just the nationalist will, play, will take one of their cards, play it, and then uh, the, the effect will happen. The, the reinforcements that arrive thanks to those cards they must go to uh, a territory where you already have units or counters, okay? If the card says that you have to receive reinforcements in a territory that you don't control or that is not contested, that is controlled by your opponent, the card cannot happen, okay? You cannot receive the reinforcement unless the card says another thing, okay? Uh, but the card, uh, even if the effect cannot be applied, it's considered that it has been played and the card will be removed from the game. Same thing happens with the cards that are used um, to support the battles. Once the card is played, the card is removed, cannot be used again, okay? Every time you play a card, the card is removed from the game. So as we said, the Nationalist will play one card, the Republican will play one card. If at some point uh, a player can, doesn't want to play all the three cards, then the other player can play uh, consecutively until that player has played this, uh, three cards. And once the player has played all the three cards, or the cards that they wanted, but less than three, obviously, or three maximum, then it will be the end of the event phase, and you will move to the maintenance phase. That's a phase that both players can uh, perform simultaneously at the same time, okay? It means basically recovering your um, generals and airplanes from the main board, okay? Update the, the objective territory tracks, okay? So if you control more than like this, okay, and update this. And if you have more than eight cards, you have to discard uh, until you have eight cards. In your hand and once and maintenance phase is also the time that you must check if a player have achieved an automatic victory okay that we will talk it about in it in, in a couple of minutes but if no player has win in this phase then you move to the next uh, to the next turn. you just move the turn track and if it enters a new turn just as, oh, let's imagine that we were playing the second one move to the third, just start a new turn by drawing three cards, moving your troops, etc, etc. But if you enter into a replacement phase, then a replacement phase must be performed and we will show you how this phase works, okay? In the replacement phase, you will use uh, the replacement points you have to, uh, well, to receive replacements, obviously, okay? So you will have as many replacement points are as objective uh, territories you control plus objective territories are contested so in our in our display now you will have four plus four eight for each player okay so as long as you have more territory you will have more replacement points and your opponent will have less obviously because you have just 12 ter territories here but let's see it like this okay eight points for each player and then starting by the player with less replacement points and if there's a tie like now starting by the nationalist player players will uh, spend one replacement point at a time okay uh, in a territory okay that's important uh, replacement points can be used just one uh, replacement point can be used just in one territory so you cannot spend two replacement points in a single territory and depending of the year you're playing the replacement points will work a little bit different okay and can be spent in different ways but basically you will spend them by receiving new units and update upgrading your units that's more or less like this so in the year 1936 you can use one replacement point to add a unit with a combat value of one into a territory where you already have counters okay Let's imagine, well, I don't have it here, but okay, I want to place one here, for example, or here. So Toledo has already uh, used a uh, replacement point. You cannot place anything else here. So as we were saying, a unit with a value of one in a territory where you have counters, or you can spend one uh, replacement point to upgrade uh, 
unit with a combat value of 1 to a unit of a combat value of 2. So just flip the unit and that's it. Okay, so first the blue will use 1, then the red one, red will use 1, and so on and so on. That's for the 36. In the year 1937, you can use one replacement point to add a unit with a combat value of 2 in a territory where you already have counters, or you can use one uh, replacement point to upgrade a unit from a combat value of 1 to a combat value of 2, or to exchange a combat uh, unit with a combat value of 2 to a unit of a combat value of 3. In those cases that you have to change the, the unit, you must, uh, the unit must be exchanged by a unit with the same flag or a shield, okay, or symbol. If you don't have units of this time, you can, in theory, you can use the unit that you prefer, but uh, with some limitations, okay? For the Republican, the, the, the Republican player can add um, Basque units, those with this flag, with the Icurriña flag, but they can appear just in Bilbao or San Sebastián, or uh, regular units or militias, as we said, with a negative one. For the nationalist, it will be or regular units or phalangist or carlist units, okay? Again, with the minus one. The, the concept is the same that we explained in the combat, okay? You cannot add a unit with a higher modifier. That's the thing. That was for the 37, okay? Add uh, one with a combat value of two, uh, turn one uh, with a one to a two, or uh, one with a combat value of two to a three. And for the year 38 and 39, you can spend one replacement point to add a unit with a combat value of two in a territory where you already have counters, or you can spend one replacement point to turn a unit with a value of one to a unit with a value of two, one with a value of two with, uh, with a value of three, or one with a value of three, turn it into a unit with a value of five. So it's just upgrading units each time. And as we said, just one uh, point can be spent in a territory, and once both players has alternate, the replace and have used all the replacement points, or let's imagine that all the units that you can place are already in the game, so you cannot place a new unit, those extra points will be lost. So once both players have used the units, or either the points, sorry, or the points are lost, then you will move to the next one, and as we said before, you will play a regular uh, a regular turn, and you will continue this way, uh, playing turns or replacement phases, until the end of the game, that usually will happen at the end and the, of the 10th turn, or that it can happen because of an automatic victory. So let's check how the end of the game works. So the end of the game, or the end of the war, may happen because of two different things. One is the, the win by conquest, okay, that may happen if uh, at some point during maintenance a player controls eight objective territories, this player automatically wins the game. Or if during the maintenance phase a player um, has units or control markers in less than eight territories connected to one another, okay, that player will immediately lose. That's the victory by conquest. It can happen also the automatic victory that we have uh, talked about uh, during the tutorial. Uh, during maintenance, if uh, the um, nationalist player, it, there are three different automatic victories, okay? If during maintenance, the nationalist player before the third turn controls Madrid, the nationalist uh, immediately wins. If uh, during maintenance any of the two players controls Barcelona, Madrid and Sevilla at the same time, uh, that player immediately wins the game. And if by the end of the 10th turn, uh, uh, during that maintenance, the Republican player has units or, uh, or control markers in four um, objective territories and uh, units and control markers in eight uh, territories connected to one another, okay, so four objective and eight uh, connected, uh, it doesn't matter if they are uh, objective or not, 
the Republican player will immediately win the game. Well, immediately is the ten turns. So, because it's considered that the the World War happens and the the Allies help the Republicans. Okay, but if none of those things that we just said happen, then you will check who's the winner uh, because of the replacement points. Okay, at the end of the ten turn, if uh, nothing happens, you just check which player has more replacement points, and that player will be the winner of the game. If there's a tie, like right now, then uh, the game uh, ends in a tie and no uh, one has won. And that's the basic game of, uh, of España 1936. As we said before, the game includes some variants. Uh, variants with some card that add uh, higher in certitude or initiative uh, in the in the decks, there's a variant more historically accurate that some cards are removed and cards will be used just as events. Or probably one of the more interesting is the 1938 scenario, in in which one you will start the the game at the middle of the war, so you will have a shorter session, uh, which is perfect if you don't have a lot of time to play the game. And as we said before, the game also includes the Armada expansion. That we won't explain it now, but just to have you the idea, as we've shown in the components, it includes uh, naval bases, uh, naval territories, and naval units. And basically, the game adds uh, a new layer of difficulty, so it's perfect for the harder player once you have mastered the regular game. And well, basically, that's Spanish 1936. Uh, perfect introduction game to war games that represent an historical event uh, that happened in Spain in those years. We hope you enjoyed the game and remember, keep playing. Bye.